So today I'm going to talk about a different method of working in ePlan. Typically, engineers would draw out the schematics, assign part numbers to it, and then place it in Pro Panel once they've finished the design. So I'm going to work backwards uh, that way. I'm going to uh, import a bunch of parts and then place them, and then I will do my schematics last. Um, I've created some Excel files down here. So the first one I'm going to use is this import parts. So these are the parts I want to use in my project. And I've just created a simple Excel file here and I've actually saved it as a CSV. So let's begin by opening the data portal. And right now this project contains no devices or no parts. So let's just verify that. So if I look at my device list here, I'm filtered on electrical engineering just to show the electrical components. Uh, I put none in here. I only have one page with nothing on it. And yeah, pretty much empty apart from the ducts and dinner rail. So let's open this data portal and go to my basket here. What I can do is import the external Excel file that I've got here. So we're looking for CSV format. I'm going to choose it and just change this to CSV. So I want to delete my shopping basket just so I'm working with a completely blank shopping cart. So it's matched up my column with um, the data portal part numbers. I'm going to hit submit. And you're going to see it's going to give me a list of my components from my Excel sheet. So I'm just going to change some quantities here. So I want 10 of these relays available to me. So I'm just going to do that. And then I've got the option to import the parts. So this will download all the data for these parts. So that will be the 3D files, the um, schematic macros if they exist. But I've already got them, so I'm not going to waste the time. I'm just going to import them into my device list. So I'm going to hit this, and then that's me done with the data portal for now. So I'm going to open my project data, and then parts, and then devices. So the device list is basically a, a list of the devices I want to use. Uh, they don't have DTs or anything like that, so no device tags. They're just a list with a number that I've associated to them. So as I place devices, the count will go down. So if I place this contact it here, you can see that the count is zero. And if I place more than uh, the allotted number, you can see it goes into negative. So it's a good way to check, you know, uh, how many parts you have in your project available to you. So that is one way of working and I can just place them freely. I can also close this list and I can import them using devices. So this is another Excel file I've got here. So I've specified a bit more information here. I've actually give each part number device tag and this part number two is actually the accessory so on this contactor here this is the little interconnector you'd have with a contactor so i've also assigned a function text as well so this is a list of components i'm going to import if i jump back to uh, eplan and go to product data devices and then import uh, i can select my excel file which i done earlier hit ok but eplan is going to scan that file and pick up any devices with part numbers that it finds, and it's just going to ask me to confirm them once it's found them. So here's all the columns I found. So my Excel only had uh, four columns, and then it's going to give me an action here. So all these are new devices because I had nothing in the project. But if it did find the exact same device, you can ask to update it or leave it as it is. So pretty flexible there. So I'm going to import all of these. And it's going to say, hey, you've been successful. So let's look at our device list here. So now I've got a nice long list of all the devices in my project. A good view to use when working in 3D is the 3D mountain layout. So in here, I can filter by unplaced parts. So when I do this, when I drag my parts on this list, it's going to um, shrink down uh, as they get placed. So I'm just going to begin by designing this cabinet. So I've got some circuit breakers. I'm going to place them all at once by just clicking this, uh, the root of the circuit breakers here. So that's those placed. I can also place my power supply. So the power supply, I actually want to use my mountain clearances here. So if I look and place this, see I've got my mountain clearances. So if I just place it here, I most likely need to shift this, uh, this thin rail up so I can just move it up like so, so the air clearances are good. So once that's done, I can continue placing the rest of the parts so I can do my PLC here. Again, I've got some mountain clearances we can review. And what I can actually enable is uh, options um, 
collision check. So if I try and place it over something, ePlan won't let me. So I need to be in the clearance here. So I get this placed perfectly. And there we go. It's going to ask me for a drilling pan as well. So I'm just going to use the very first one and click OK. So I can actually view that by going to view and then drilling patterns. And just for clarity, I'll turn off my mountain clearances and I'll also turn off collision check. So I can see the drill pattern here. I can actually see it from my ducts also and my din rails. So let's continue finishing up this project on my back pan. I'm just going to place this one here and notice PLC is actually snapping to predefined slot positions here. So I can easily position everything that I want it. Let's place the power supply and then I'll turn off the drill in view so we get uh, the elements looking properly. There we go. So let me place the rest. I've got a few more items here. I've got my main circuit breaker, so I'm going to place that one up here. I've got my secondary circuit breaker here. So again, just place them as I go. I've got 10 more overloads. I can place them all, place completely on this rail here so I can snap it here. And I can look at my contactors. I've actually got 12 contactors in this, so I need 10. I can just also place those as needed. And then I've got some control relays. Again, I've got 12. I think I need to place 10 on this first rail. And I've still got two spares. So I can place those down here also. Some safety relays. Let's place those here. I don't need a drill pan, so I'll just cancel that. And then my tonal blocks, let's just place the first one. So TB1 has not been placed. Let's place those here. So this is my distribution. And then it's going to prompt me to place my second. And this is going to be my motor terminals here. And then finally, I've only got a few more components. So uh, this PB, which is actually a thermostat. And then these final two contactors I'll place on this rail here. So my back pan looks pretty good. I've got everything laid out how I want it. Uh, so what I can start doing is uh, connecting devices straight from ProPanel. So if I select this main circuit breaker here, I can go to project data, devices, and then interconnect devices. So I'm gonna select device I want to go from, which is my main circuit breaker. And this is the function text that was brought in from uh, my Excel file and then my target. So I'm gonna connect to those terminal blocks for my distribution. So that's TB1. And I know that it's a connection point two. And I'm going to go to the top of the uh, distribution block. So two, and then I need to go to this one here. And then finally, six would go to 3A1. So these are my connections I've generated, but I don't have any information on them. I can add um, various information here. So I'm going to add the wire size here. So if I got connection and I pick it as a zero gauge, I can use that here. And I can also specify the color of each individual conductor. So if I go to properties and I give this one brown, and then this one would be black. And then this final one, we can do gray. Let me select gray here and click OK. And now those are connected together. I can tell ePlan to route them by going to project data connections and route. And it's going to route them here, uh, you can actually see if I rotate it around, uh, it's tried to fit it through the duct. I can also tell ePlan to go and route it freely as well. So this is more of a sweeping thing. So if I need to adjust the curve on this, I can tell ePlan to do that also. So let's go back to my front view. Now let's generate some project reports. So if I go to utilities reports and generate project reports, I can see I've got some pages. So I've got parts lists. So these are, this is everything I imported and then a connection list. So right now I've only connected three uh, connections and you can see the source is my MCB to my distribution block and then a CSA a color and then a length. So all very useful and it's all live information. Let's jump to my schematic page and then place these devices already. So let's place that main circuit breaker. So that's this one here and I've already specified my uh, potential definition points here. So I'm going to place that there and then I'm going to place that TB1 also. So I'm just going to drag that in, place the first one in 115, place this one in 116, and then this one in 117. 
So I just need to connect these real quick. So I'm just going to grab this T node, this connection right here, and then do the same over here like so. So I'm just going to tell Eplan to play some numbers real quick. So I'm using a shortcut key here, and it's going to give me question marks. So what I want to do now is look at my connections list. So my connections navigator, I can see I've got uh, three conductors in my 3D layout and three conductors in my multi-line. All I need to do is synchronize those two. So these ones are just defaulted as red because that's the, the default setting in this project. But I can go to utilities, synchronize, connections, and I want to push the 3D information into my multi-line or all representation type. So let's do that. I click OK. And you can see that these ones now are brown, black, gray, and then zero gauge here. So I can number them from here. I can hit uh, the number key, which is uh, control and N in my uh, computer, and then hit OK. And you can see it gives these some new connection designations. So that's great. I've got those updated. So if I look at the connection list here now and then update it, you can see I now have the connection number which I assigned in my schematic page over here. So these are now linked together. So let's take this a step further and let's route some connections from the schematic page. So I'm going to grab my devices here and I'm going to place three circuit breakers. So the first three here, so I'm going to place this one in 120 and then this one in 121 and then this one here, 122. And then again, I want to do the same. I'm going to place the connection. Like so, and then I'm going to number it also. And you can see it's automatically numbering based on the phase and the counter. And if I jump back to my 3D here, I can tell it to route these three circuit breakers. So if I just select those, I got project data, connections, and then route. You can see those also get routed exactly where I put them. So we can take that one step further. I can work off schematics. I can work off uh, pro panel. I can also work off input and a connection list. So this is a source and target. So I'm going to wire all the connect, all the contactors to all the terminals here. And then I've specified the color of the conductors and also the sizes of them. So if I jump back in here and I got project data, connections, import, and then routing connections, I'll select that Excel file I just showed you. Click OK. The plan's going to think a minute and look at the list that I just imported. And I'm going to hit OK to grab all those connections and then highlight these terminals here. Go to Project Data, Connections, and then Route. So these are now routed based from my Excel file. And what ePlan will do will figure out the shortest route to these terminal blocks. If I don't like uh, the way that it's done that, I can easily reroute it. So if I go to Project Data, Connections, and then Change Route, it's going to ask me for the source path. So that will be here. And then where do I want to end in this one? And which path do I want to take? So I want them all to go through this thin one here. So if I click here and then hit Spacebar, it's going to say, which connections, or in this case, I want to use them all, and then click OK. And as you see, they've all been rerouted in the same path. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Um, it's just a different way of working. It's showing uh, the ties between the schematic and the pro panel layout in 3D, and any changes we do here will get reflected on the schematic also. So very straightforward to use in, in plan. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it.